Hey there, Wargamers, Justin the Iron Painter here, and we are now live. For the three of you who consistently tune in at the start of every stream, thank you very much for being here. I really do appreciate it. You help make my day. And then I just throw stuff. That's what I do. Throw something on the desk, don't need to be there. Throw it on the gram. But yeah, I appreciate you guys being here. And Clam Wolf, I got some sleep. Uh, I already don't sleep well. Uh, so, uh, I tried to sleep. And for the handful of you guys who are here, Klein Wolf has given me shit because uh, he stayed up late last night uh, to play some games with me, which is uh, something that never gets to happen. And uh, I came home early, a little bit early from work so that we could play. Mm. Give me one second. I forgot to do something. Bella, I have no idea what you're barking at. This dog is always freaking out over something. All right. Uh, I assumed that you went to... Well, I guess it could have went either way. I thought you might have went to bed, but also, I suppose you could have just stayed up since tomorrow you'll have to be up at oh dark 30 for work anyway. So, yep. Ah. Okay. Now, for today... For today... Let's see. I hit the volume on it? I think it did. Whoops. I'm gonna have to give me a new headset at some point. This one's all jacked up. Alright, so for today, I do have some things I want to show you guys that I worked on yesterday at the shop. So let's switch on over here. Get our camera up. Perfect. Cool. Now, so that's a 3D print that we did. We're testing out our FDM printers. So Austin did their little test file. We printed a little doggy. Little doggy. It's kind of odd looking. Uh, if it had primer on it, it wouldn't be as odd. But you get that interesting sheen from the, the FDM because it's shiny until it's primed there. So, but pretty interesting. So we had that. I forgot that was on my desk, though. It wasn't what I was going to show you guys. Um, but more specifically, I got some walls here um, built at work. There's some some adjustments I want to make. Um, oh, mm. I overslept, as I'm known to do. Hmm. So what was that like? Five six hours sleep, give or take. message from old nomadic show me some minis yeah 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 uh, we'll zoom out in just a second and I will show you guys um, what we are looking at oh what's going on with this thing there we go So, right. there we go. All right, let me get Twitch over here. Pause. All right, cool. All right, so um, I was working on my walls for my little fortress stuff. So we got our, I took, or I throttled down the rivets. So I have three instead of five. Took them off for those. It's got these ruined things. You could see through them. Uh, when there's spaces to see through. Got some notes on here for adding cracks to the walls. <clears throat> so, and they're both slightly different.
So, yeah. So those are the walls. Austin was working on some turrets to go up here. Some turrets. And then we got the gate. Now this. And they're, they're still in line with Battletech stuff, so, you know. That'll, that's a, it's a hex down here at the bottom. And, um, it goes straight down the line, so that would be like one, be like one, two, three-ish hexes. But it goes straight, so on a hex map, that should, uh, should line up if you put these, um, uh, into a hex. That's assuming I got this width proper. It's, it's entirely possible that I didn't. Um... <clears throat> But yeah, uh, we're trying to figure out something to do up here. This seems, feels a little anemic for the gate. Um, and um, yeah, maybe do something a little here. We're not exactly sure right there. Um, but definitely something up here. Something that bulks out just a little bit. Nice bacon. <laughs> but yeah. That look kind of look cool. Give the illusion of Ambrose that opening. Chosen. Hey, Furion5, thank you for the sub, man. I appreciate that. How are you doing? How's the painting been going? That is uh, sub number 16 for the month. Thank you. Let's update our bot here. Timer. Boop, 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 boop. Boom. Let's see. So I got some good news about heading back in, back to the project. Amazon before America. So got quite excited to use the AMP code and get some stuff I'm from Mexico. So. Um, that still might not be too bad on the shipping. Um, I'd be curious to see if it's what the price difference is going to Mexico versus going um, uh, across the water. Though the shipping could take a bit right now, so who knows? But yeah. Um, so again, working on turrets for these, and uh, again trying to figure out what we want to do to bulk up the top and maybe add some detail here. But I do think this is cool. Um, got the little buttress things that jut out. Uh, it was interesting setup because these these socket into the MDF, and then there's a little slit behind them, and this slides in behind it and locks in place. Yeah! If only it was 40k. But this is, uh, this Battletech scale. I suppose that it would be tall enough for some 40k stuff, like Marines would easily hide behind it. Uh, Imperial Knights would just tower over it. Um, dreadnoughts would probably be pretty close to the height. At least the new Dreadnoughts, the small Dreadnoughts, probably like that tall. Um, but yeah, uh, we do have some gates and, and walls like this, um, that are 40k scale already in the, um, Strider's Landing set. It's got the big gate that opens. Um, but yeah, that's what I was working on yesterday and, uh, I was pretty, uh, pretty excited to get it done. Um, it's not perfect, but, um, I was able to, um, it, it went together and that's a big plus, uh, going in having a concept and it works. Um, that's pretty huge. It's pretty huge. Um, so we talked about doing um, on this, maybe bringing this line over a little bit. So this right here, and bring that over, and then have some of this like jut out and come around. So we have like a lip that comes forward. Talked about. Let's see. Hey, very cool, very cool, man. Your hobby progress in uh, 2020 was astounding, and I'm hoping 2021 is equally as amazing for you. Um, I have been considering maybe doing some slightly shorter walls. Um, I feel like those are a little long, so I could shorten them a little bit, and you know, bring the cracks down and come down here. Um, just for footprint-wise, this feels a little big. Um, so, we'll see. Um, or at least for storage purposes, maybe have... Um, two sides like this that um, when they're stacked up with this thing um, could actually like transport that way right like because that overlaps too much um, so if I shorten them then we could uh, you could actually stack these in a box a little easier or um, kind of do your table setup a little easier because like right now when you when you set it up on the table that's a huge um, 
distance, you know, versus if it did it like that, and then you spread it, split, spread it out, and had a couple hexes in between. Cool, but like that's a really big distance. So, might uh, maybe shorten a little, or um, uh, bring them in a little bit. Maybe I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, let's see what I decide to do. Um, I need to see what the actual length is on it. Maybe if I get that down to like, so it's, pro it's probably three hexes long. So it's probably like three point six inches or so. Um, I could do it two hexes, and it would probably be right around here, um, which is still not too bad. Um, <clears throat> still gives you some room to hide a, a mech around without having to like, you know, do too much maneuvering. Um, maybe I'll do that shot today. Maybe I'll tick around with some um, some some shortened walls and see how I feel about those. Um, so yeah, we yeah, the the prototyping. Uh, where would my box go? Uh, the prototyping at work has been a lot of fun. Trying new stuff, seeing what I can come up with. Um, I also, again, think that um, this will look really good for my bunkers. Cool little, like, fortress-looking dealia. I think the aesthetic fits pretty nice. So, um, hoping that the over the coming months I'll be able to start wrapping this stuff up and uh, start making some plans for um, um, painting and bringing it to market. That would be quite good. Quite good. Hopefully. Also, uh, Wills didn't get super excited, but apparently um, his commission showed up. So hopefully he's happy. He did not say too much, unfortunately. To my stream, DC. No. Okay. We're good. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get back to where we were yesterday. I was working on these little bros, and we were doing the uh, the gold. I was working on the gold. Uh, so I think I was on to the bright gold, and I was doing um, blazes. Should be over here. wooden spoon i feel like um <clears throat> i've seen some instagram posts with you uh doing stuff how's the uh the hobby treating you the content creation stuff treating you or the networking i feel like i've seen you working with some people or posting unless i'm just bananas crazy that's also possible Very cool. Yeah, like I said, I feel like I saw something. Okay, put those over here and mix up our gold. That's what I saw. That's what I saw the other day. Yep. Right. This might be a little bit large, but oh. extra um, kind of glaze stuff down without any paint in it it's really useful for for me at least for trying to uh, feather edges out so get some of that prepped <clears throat> yeah 
Uh, I mean, it also could just be the company. I mean, mine are from Chessex, and they do a lot of custom dice stuff. Like, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't spring for like ultra expensive ones. It's just what was available. Um, so sometimes it's manufacture and then logo design and placement setup stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, that's really cool, man. I wish that I was more organized myself, um, but c'est la vie. Even if I was more organized, I'm not sure I'd get much more done because I think my biggest problem is time. Time, time, time. So many things I want to do, so little time to do them in. And that is, that is the problem. Um, I mean, yeah, um, that makes sense to me, too. Um, being negative about um, someone else's paint job is is kind of silly. Um, I'm very negative in general, though, not about paint jobs, but just stuff. Like, I felt bad because um, a friend of mine posted yesterday that he was getting into 40K, and I was like, I really wish you'd gotten into Legion or um, um, Battletech. Um and I was kind of going on about my distaste for 40k right now, and honestly, I was really doing him a disservice, and I apologize. And it's like, I don't mean to be this way, it's more, I haven't gamed with you in years, and then when you do get, finally get back into gaming, you choose a game that I've been distancing myself from because I feel alienated, and everything, every time I finally feel like I'm getting some traction, I just get smacked back down. And I just, I'm, you know, just over it right now with 40k. I can't keep up. And that's what he's getting into. And I was like, honestly, you're probably fine as a new player. As someone who's been in it for a while and trying to keep up, um, you have all this old stuff that if you didn't get it finished, now it's being replaced. And then you just end up with these piles of shame or feeling like you're wasting money. And it's like, why even bother? I can just wait to do my army when they finally plateau. And if they never plateau and stop just pumping stuff out, then I'll just not buy stuff. Because I can't keep up as it is. And I kept buying shit. And getting stressed out about getting the new shit and had no time. And by the time I was able to do stuff, they put out something new or they re replaced my old stuff. And it's like, cool. What's the point? Um, but as he is somebody new, he doesn't really have that backlog of old stuff like I do to have to worry about. But yeah, it can be a little uh, a little hard to, uh, to get positive. Yeah. But, as I did end my conversation with him, um, I do want him to be happy, even if he's playing a game that I'm not actively pursuing. Hope that he's, you know, enjoys the, the hobby aspect of it and the gaming aspect, and I hope that despite me having a, a rough go of it or not enjoying it, that he does. You know, just because I did doesn't mean that, or didn't doesn't mean that he can't. You know, um, but I, I really did do him a disservice by being you know, come across so negative at the start there. It's like I should have been happy that he was getting back in, into any hobby, really. But instead, I went down my little tirade of not being happy with 40k.
Okay, so I think that's probably okay. Come here, little Irby. Oh, that's my own paint scheme. Hey, Mom. I have a live mic so they can hear everything you guys say. Anyway, um... Uh, so this is a custom paint scheme um, for some mercs that I'm doing. Um, there are lots of paint schemes for Battletech um, and units and houses and mercs and all that stuff. So um, I kind of did my own thing so that uh, I didn't feel bad if it wasn't um, on um, lore accurate to something out there, you know. Um, and that, uh, that helped me uh, kind of not stress too much about it. Um, but yeah, my own little thing. This is the MFA, Mortem Fair, Angeles. Um, <clears throat> and you said you're getting into what was going on last night. Are you talking about like our political stuff in Georgia, or um, was there something else going on? Oh, oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Half of us do, too. Yeah, it's um, some pretty divisive stuff here most of the time. Yep. People don't know how to converse about it. Or if you have a differing opinion, you they, they can't talk to you, and it's like okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, voter turnout. Uh, this election was pretty massive for us. Um, I don't know what it's like around the world, but yeah. Um, I have always a, a firm. Um, supporter of uh, getting out and voting. I even tell people, it's like, we can disagree on our views, uh, but I still want you to go vote, even if it's against the guy that I'm voting for, because if you don't vote, you're not participating, and you're not doing your civic duty to help shape the country in a direction you want to see it go.
And we can have different views, but you still got to participate if you want your views to be heard. And, and yeah, the system feels rigged half the time for us, and our politicians, at least in the United States, feel like um, they owe allegiance to the lobbyists and big corporations and big business, you know, people who give them money. Um, but you should still vote and try. Get rid of them if you don't like that. Keep trying. Don't give up. You know. Unfortunately, some people have, but I still try. Especially here where, like, patriotism is, like, a big thing. It's like, I feel like you can't get much more patriotic than voting. It's like somebody somewhere, in it, both domestic and abroad, has died, at least for us, to have the ability to vote. The ultimate way to pay homage and respect to them is to, uh, to exercise that right. At least that's the way I look at it. Yeah, I've had that conversation with a lot of people here. Uh, I don't think it would ever fly, but I think that you should be incentivized to vote. You should participate, and I also think it should be a national holiday here. You shouldn't have to choose between um, getting your paycheck for the week uh, so that you can put food on your table and uh, voting. Uh, make it a national holiday. A paid, paid day off. So the only excuse at that point is being lazy. And here, in particular, I think voting should be across multiple days, not one day. And you could do some early voting, and like that, that is a thing, and I'm aware of it. But for in-person voting, which a lot of people want to do, um, make it two or three days. So that the days off, you have an opportunity to, to make it, and it doesn't disrupt the economy. Um, and you, know, you can plan for that, and still come in, and, and if you're more comfortable doing it in person, you still have that ability to do so. But a one-day thing with long lines and... Having to, you know, sometimes choose between work and voting, it's like, no, that, that should, that's a silly problem. But that's me. <clears throat> I'm sure I had that much water in my beard. Oh, that it did. So I was using white gold before. Let's grab some of that.
No, it's my Vortex mixer. I'm trying to get it to dislodge the uh, agitator in there. That ought to be fine, I hope. Now I got a Vortex mixer on my desk. I'm sure it's not the most amazing thing for you guys to hear. Mixy mix going on here. funny though. That would have been funny. That is not quite as bright as I want it to be, so congratulations, get a little bit more paint. <clears throat> Posh coffee machine. I mean, that's funny. The, uh, the next goal is technically um, um, going towards uh, upgrading our setup. Um, Specifically planning for the future getting some extra cameras and a switcher deck and a new mic or an additional mic I should say uh, for future live stream games mm -hmm. um, So over the next six months, that's what our donation goals are gonna go towards <clears throat> And uh, mr. Furion, uh, I like it pretty good. I don't think it's required um, To have but I do think it's helpful And some people will have you believe that every hobby product that it's good is something that everyone needs. Honestly, a Vortex mixer, mixer is a luxury. It's not needed. It's just um, helpful if you have the extra income. Now, um, if you have a physical disability or something that makes it hard to shake stuff, shoulder, arms, fingers, whatever, sure, this might be more of a necessity for you. Uh, but for the average person that is uh, in average or above average health, it's probably a luxury. Um, if you don't need something to help you shake, I think you're better off spending that money on more paints, supplies, and models. If you have plenty of paint supplies and models and the extra income, sure, I think it's good. Um, but I'm not going to tell someone, like, you have to have a Vortex mixer, because in general, I don't think you do. And my phone vibrated about something. Um, what, what was it here? Claim it in the name of the Emperor. Hey, you didn't have to do that, but thank you. Thank you. That's pretty awesome, man. That, let's see. Uh, I can't actually read my screen. Uh, I'm going to go over here to see. Um, widgets. There we go. Very cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. You could have spent that money on anything, but you, you've spent it here. That's awesome. I need to make a note so I make sure that, because um, I get paid through PayPal too at my job. I need to make sure that like I shift funds over and put them in the right place. Snoofy, thank you for the sub, man. I appreciate that. Well, wouldn't, um, that wasn't required though. I do, I always try and help um, whenever I can, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So, this okay. Um, just gotta make sure I leave. Yeah, you know, don't transfer that over because I try and keep it separate so I don't mess stuff up. Uh, but Snoofy, thank you. That's um, that is sub number seventeen, and we are uh, over halfway to our. Um, some parts have to go towards storage. That's fair. That's fair. Um, we are over halfway to our sub goal. Uh, not sub goal, uh, donation goal for the month. 
uh, which I set it high. Um, Got to have goals, but if we hit it, uh, we'll plan another live stream battle report or, or live fire. Um, um, oh my god, my my brain is just dribbling. Um, live fire exercise, man. Kit wants the action. Live fire exercise. So live uh, a, a live game. Uh, we'll play another game of uh, BattleTech. Um, the end of the month. Um, yeah, that thing. Um, with you guys from the stream. Um, so we'll try and um, um, get all that uh, a bit more cohesive this time uh, compared to what it was last time. Uh, Pharaoh Roach, if I got it right, thank you for the uh, for the follow. Thank you for popping in. How you doing? Um, and Wooden Spoon, if you're around um, when that type of stream goes down, you're welcome to uh, to pop in and hang out with us. Um, I think you might have missed the one in December uh, where I dressed up as a reindeer. Well, I wore a reindeer onesie and some antlers, and, and we played a, a live, uh, live game. Um, but that's kind of what we're, we're striving towards, using the, the funds to up offset uh, work so that I could take some time to do um, a live game. And then um, as uh, things progress this year, hopefully, if I'm in a position where I can get into my place, um, have that separate room, and then use those funds to go towards, um, I want to get three cameras, a microphone, and a um, switcher deck. Um, and those are all particularly affordable. The three cameras and the switcher deck are probably still cheaper than this one camera because um, they've got really good cameras now at good prices so um, and then the microphone is probably one or two hundred bucks it's not too bad uh, if we had everything and I just need to get a mic I would eat that myself like it's not a problem um, to get us going well, very cool very cool I'm hoping that's something we'll be doing more of in the future that would be a really fun thing to do and next time I've got to get Clan Wolf's mech on the table it wasn't here in time um, um, for the last one, but it's here now. He painted a mech for me. Uh, Strigoi. Strigoi. For the tabletop. So. Uh, Pharaoh, I'm not doing too bad. How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, I'm trying to um, show my appreciation and my thanks um, for the support that I've gotten here um, today. And sometimes I worry that I don't come across the way I want. Um, I try and be thankful. Uh, and, and show my appreciation, but sometimes I worry that people are like, hey, he sounds stupid. I don't know about him. Like, that's a worry, the anxiety. So hopefully it comes across well and you guys know that, like, I am truly thankful for your support and your help. So thank you. And uh, I missed a message somewhere in there. Colby, Eagle Eye 707, what's up, man? How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Just woke up. Nothing to do at work, so I got to sleep in. Hey, that's nice. Catching up on some of them, uh, them Z's. Getting a little extra sleepy sleep. It's pretty good. I would say I tried to catch up on sleep, but Clan Wolf played games with me last night, and I was up late. That was legitimately fun, though. I don't get to um, um, play games often, um, and with Clan Wolf, it's almost never. The last time I played uh, a game with Clan Wolf was probably over a year ago, I think, and we played Castle, Cra Ca Castle Crashers, I think. And last night he uh, he set an alarm to to be awake um, when I got off work, so that he could play some games with me on his uh, knowing that he had the next day off because he doesn't get to game very often either. Uh, so we were up very late uh, playing some Diablo two or three on the computer or not the computer the the PlayStation. Yep. Hey, well, you got plenty of um, hobby stuff to do, man. I know. I sent some to you. Get off me, sticker. And they had, um, yesterday during my stream, I got a, a message from someone who I didn't recognize, but it was on Facebook, and I was like, okay. And they were like, hey, you mentioned on stream you were looking for art troopers. Asthma Day, the, the manufacturer, uh, or owner, uh, company, whatever, that, that does it now with FFG, the, on their manufacturer website, they had them in stock. They were $5 more expensive than miniature market and still had free shipping, so I paid 70 bucks, got those boxes of dudes for my Legion so that we can get that going and have something else going uh, for the, uh, the live stream uh, once my Mando suit is done, because uh, hopefully if it's done by May, I want to dress up and do a... a a Legion game wearing the Mando suit. Um, 
but yeah, um, they had him, and that was pretty exciting. Um, and I didn't even I didn't even know who it was for Twitch, but they had mentioned they they heard me talk about it on stream, sent me a DM, and I was like, okay, cool. Um, Now, Colby, I think yesterday you were playing a little bit of League, maybe even playing with Noah. How'd your, uh, how'd your sessions go? Oh, that's fair. Well, that's not too bad. Hey, Wooden, thank you again for the donation, man, and the support. And uh, I hope that 2021 is better for, for all of us. And uh, hopefully you'll get to spend a little bit of time with your family. Work will go well. Hobby time will go well. And hopefully this evening, at the very least, if we're not sure what the rest of the year will bring, hopefully tonight will be a good night. So thank you for popping in. And thank you so much for your support, man. I really do appreciate it. And thank you. That, that I can't take full credit. Those are actually um, there's recesses, so it's really easy to target those. I wish it was all free, and it it's not. Um, but I appreciate it. Um, I think they look cool too. I think it's a nice um, nice little feature they have now. All the uh, well, I guess I don't know about all the variants in the the universe, but like the uh, plastic ones here all have checker pattern up there. You can paint. Um, it's just part of the mech design. Um, I like it. I think it looks cool. Clan Wolf was talking to me about how uh, I use that uh, that aesthetic uh, quite a bit in some of my minis, but a lot of um, the minis have that as kind of part of their their lore or their um, units or whatever. Uh, my Space Marine use Space Marines use it. A lot of the BattleTech stuff uses it, and Orcs use it, and just it's a cool little thing. I kind of like it. it. Helps break up. It's also a even if you're freehanding, it's not the easiest thing, but it is something. A little easier than some more complicated freehand stuff that I can't do to be able to do and try and get a, a cool little effect on a mini. So, I do like it. But yeah, I'm hoping that when you get to get around to it or get motivated, that you uh, you work on some um, some Warhammer stuff that you got, or at least the Space Marine, and then uh, maybe uh, work on some mechs or something, you know dip your toe into a few different things um, and see what sticks, what you enjoy painting, what games you might want to focus on or play. That would be really cool. Hey, Crossbow, what's up, man? How you doing?
lurking while working. I like to hear that. Hopefully the day is going smoothly. Got itch. Here's itching. Here we go. Zeno spotted. That Zelicons, it is. Uh, a crossbow. That uh, that might be outside of my realm of expertise, man. Um, what kind of what kind of stuff do you work on? If you're allowed to talk about it. And uh, Colby, no, this is uh, this is one of the plastic models from the the box set. Mr. Zelicons, thank you for that raid, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. How was your stream? For everyone who came in today, thank you. I appreciate you popping in and hanging out with us today. Yeah, uh, Colby, it's um, uh, it's from the new box. Uh, well, not new, but it's from the Game of Armor Combat box. They're... Uh, it's a really good value. It's like I think retail sixty. You usually find online for forty five, fifty bucks. Eight mechs in it at that price point. It's really not bad. Oh, the shadow didn't work. I'm sorry. There you go. There we go. If you guys aren't following Mr. Zelicons here, do us a favor. Click that link. Hit that follow and show a little bit of hobby love. But yeah, man. What were you working on today? I have never actually used chrome paint. Okay. Might be a little thin. We'll see how it looks. It is. It's a little thin. It's kind of pooling instead of going the way I want. That's okay. We can we can touch up some of the toes here. Not a big deal. I'm not even sure why I'm focusing on the feet that much. It's going to be covered in dirt anyway. This is me. This is how I operate. Moving up the leg makes a lot of sense, but sitting down there by the toes, that's, that's dumb. That was particularly 
bright right here. Let's just see if I can get that top peak a little brighter. I think that's looking pretty good. I think when we um, come back around to um, the final stages, the um, hitting the recesses with that dark color will make things pop a bit more, and then we'll be good to go. Still not 100% happy with the way the metallic's looking here, but I think we're just going to move on. Alright, here, little Irby Mech. Your turn, buddy.
tight to get a little bit of these lines here after we've done a little cleaner. This one. Interesting. Okay. I thought that earlier you were kind of innuendoing it might be something like inappropriate, but funny. Like, this sounds like something serious. Phone's blowing up. What's going on? Okay. Alright. T Boat, you're up. Okay, okay. There are so many of you guys that hang out that are just like smart people. I, I don't say that to be insulting. It's like I paint minis, and you guys are doing like IT shit and software design and engineering, and it's like, my god. <laughs> smart people, and it's like. I don't know, you kind of, you guys kinda of make me feel dumb. <laughs>
Huh, tracking page for accidents inspection. So like, um... It's like a driver. Um... They could like, you know, I don't know, click, ping, snap, whatever, and be like, oh, that's, that's such and such trucker guy, and... He's been in 15 accidents, and uh, he's had five speeding tickets in six years, and um, his truck's up to date on inspection. Like that, like you could just have a driver or a truck and kind of get info about him. Maybe I oversimplified. I don't know. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Go over here. I think that's probably good. Ugh, this is all goopy. I was today years old when I realized that that hole was offset to one side and not straight at the top. That's uh, useful to know. much in there so I thought <laughs> yeah. I knew there was gonna be a phallic joke in there it's gonna happen I 
think this is a little strong, but I want to try it. hope is we can use this to push the shadows just a little bit. I think we will. That looks good. So I think after this, I'll probably come in with a little bit of black and we'll um, tidy up the edges of our metallic area and then move on to other stuff. Probably, probably, in typical Justin fashion, put too much effort into this. Probably should have stopped a long time ago. But, this is where we are, so we're going to continue. I do think it's looking good though. I am reasonably pleased with this. Hey Bobo. What are you doing, pretty girl? What are you doing back there, huh? What are you doing back there, huh? Hey. I love you. You just come in the house from running? Head scratch. Little head scratch. Can I do a little earbud? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love you. No kisses. Fine. Fine. No kisses for you. I love you. I love you. Yeah. I do. I do. This just blinks at me. Look, I gotta work, pre girl. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. guys up a little bit from the line of fire um uh it it depends um that is pretty good in a nutshell um but it really does depend um sometimes i will highlight first uh before any washing um mostly because a, a, with the washing Washing, when people refer to washing, they generally are referring to applying a color um, that's going to pool in a recess, so you get a gradient, but they're 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 going over the whole surface, so they get those um, those crisp details in the panel lines and stuff. When I wash, it's also a form of glazing. Uh, I know that it's going to tint the model and pool, so sometimes I will, and you guys have seen me do it on this guy a little bit. I'll dry brush or I'll highlight or I'll whatever, then I'll do the wash as a wash and a glaze to pool and tint and then I'll re-highlight over the top uh, so that I've got this transition of like a kind of a, a, a gray highlight and then at the top they're a little bit of a lighter gray this is not the best example um, 
but the principle of the matter is still the same, or the principles are the same. Um, if you highlight first, then wash, it's going to tint all your highlights a little bit. Then you can come in and highlight the extreme, and then you get a transition, even with the same color. You get a transition um, in the same highlights. Um, so, but yeah, uh, if you base coat um, and then wash and then dry brush or highlight, like your, that's a pretty good, pretty good process. Um, I do a lot of airbrushing as well. Um, so the, the intricacies of the, the matter are really come into, um, what it is you're trying to achieve. So your, uh, your base coats and your highlights and your washing may actually be a lot slower depending on what you're doing. Kind of like where I did the blue here. That was not a particularly fast process. Um, uh, because of the, the nature of what I was doing, it wasn't just a base coat. It was, uh, blending and transitions and then it was um, less about washing um, with those and more about glazing uh, to get the transition so um, your processes will change based on what you're doing uh, but uh, for the most part you're right um, and for tabletop stuff in particular that is a, a very good process to, to try and stick to and also having expectations of the quality of the outcome that you want um, going in will help you kind of stick to what you're doing. I struggle with that because uh, I'm not very good at gaming so uh, I focus on trying to make sure that I have really good looking minis because I do have some control over that. I don't have control over um, a lot of aspects of the games that I play you know whether it's dice rolls or me just being bad or a little bit of both. Um, this I can control so I, I lose myself a little bit and um, uh, or lose a little bit of focus in regards to what I should be doing. So like these mechs in actuality probably didn't need the amount of detail that I've tried to pack into them for what they are, for what they're going to do on the table, for how long I'm going to use them. Uh, but I'm not a very good gamer, so I again, I focus on trying to have some really cool looking minis that uh, while I'm being uh, dominated on a tabletop, my opponents might be like, hey, those minis look really cool. And I could be like, yeah, you want to talk about them? Like, that's that's where a lot of my enjoyment comes from. Um, I, I, I like that. Um, if that makes sense. And right now, I'm not washing. I'm um, sort of glazing. Um, and I'm attacking um, recesses and stuff that I want to be darker. So like right in here, uh, I'm putting some right up there. I'm trying to push towards the top so that we get that darker area. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So we get a little bit of a darker area at the top here and the lighter area at the bottom. So I'm pushing the shadows basically. Um, that was also uh, a focus. Um, unfortunately, um, the quality with which I painted um, never actually did much for commission work because most people that I dealt with outside of wheels um, and Jason Murray, um, which is tabled nude from the stream, the majority of the commission clients that I um, I worked for um, or did work for um, um, were more interested in quantity over quality. So it didn't really matter how good I was painting; they didn't care. Uh, they also didn't want to pay for that quality. Um, they just wanted to see uh, what the best quality was they could get for the best price. Um, um, but it wasn't about max quality. Whereas you go to wheels and he'll be like, uh, um, you know, what's the best quality you can put out that I can afford? Um, not, you know, it's not always about just the bottom line price. Cause he could just get me to paint stuff at a lower quality and get, you know, four times as many models done, probably at least twice as many models done. Um, but he likes having premium quality and he pays me to do these really cool looking minis that I have a lot of fun doing. But the average commission I, uh, client I had just not, did not do that. Yep, you can have fast and cheap, or you can have slow and good quality. Um, you can't have both. Finding the happy medium is is a trick, and I struggle with it. Even even if you're not talking about commissions, if you're just talking about having your own stuff done, that's that's still a, a, a problem. And that's why I was saying setting expectations for what you want to do and trying to stick to them. So like if you want these to be above tabletop, set where that benchmark is and try to hit it, and then be done with it. Otherwise, you'll be like me, and you can... Lester Bursley told me once, uh, an artist's piece is never done. It's simply where they decided to stop. There you go. Yep. Um, 
and uh, that's it's absolutely true. Uh, you could have a piece that's the best piece you've ever painted, but that is still where you chose to stop. You probably could have came in and did a little extra pushing of a gradient here, or contrast here, or glaze here, or shadow here, or highlight there, and you could keep going and going and going, and it could never stop. I mean, if you had a million years to paint on one model, and you would live the whole time, and that's the only model you're ever going to paint, you could do thousands and thousands of very, very water-thin layers of glazing to build up your colors and have these you know, pretty uh, amazing transitions. It just takes forever. Uh, so like that stuck with me when Lester said that because it's true. It is true. Um, artist piece is never done. It's simply where he chose to stop. Yep. So guys Send a message real quick. That might depend. I could write uh, the best paper for a class ever written, but if it's not on time, the teacher might still not be happy about it and might not pass. If your um, uh, timetables are um, you're only owed to yourself, then sure. The problem is, and the same with the commissions, is when you start having um, deadlines for other people. I mean, that's fair. That is fair. I'm a big, uh, big proponent of communication. You know, like, and I did the same thing with commissions. Like, with wheels, it's very rare that I've ever had a commission go out as quickly as I would want. But I've always kept them in the loop and be like, hey, here's where I'm at. Here's some pictures. Sorry it's taking so long. Let me let you see the progress. Let you know I'm not just sitting here sipping my ties and playing Call of Duty. Like, I'm working on your stuff. I'm just slow. And that's always been Wheels' thing with commission work is, um, and one of the reasons he keeps coming back to me is uh, even though I'm slow is I keep him in the loop and I talk to him and a lot of the other studios he's worked with don't do that um, he's kept in the dark or they don't do the things he asks them to do and you know etc etc um, and communications a big deal so I'll, I'll give you that for sure
and speaking of um, painting and gaming and whatnot, Colby, um, we are halfway to our monthly goal. If we make it, I'm going to do another live stream game of Alpha Strike. If you want to play and participate and or paint a mech this time, uh, food for thought. We don't have a set date because we haven't hit the goal, but if we do, uh, you're welcome to uh, participate again. Probably try and get uh, Wrangle, Mamoth, um, Lando, and Dragon and see if they want to uh, maybe pop in Discord with us this time. So food for thought, man, if you want to uh, participate. It'll be on a Sunday evening, though. Um, that's the, the easiest day for me to try and get out to the shop to do this kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've done that, too. Um, very rare do I have something that came up day of, and then even then, you know, I'd still tell you. But, like, if I have an issue and it's like, hey, I've had that happen. I can't think of a specific example where I've messaged teachers and I'm like, hey, I've got some things going on. Here's what's happened. I'm going to try my best to get this in on time. But um, in the event that I'm delayed, which is likely you know would I be able to turn it in a little bit later or could you could you make sure my submission online is open so I can send this in it might be a day or two late and then I think some, most of the time I've worried when I did that and then like I think the latest was like an hour or something I'm like oh I think it's going to take two extra days because something happened a death or what the hell ever and then I get in and it's like oh yeah it was, it was an hour late you know but I told the teacher a week in advance or as soon as I knew to let him know yeah you know yeah for sure And unless you're the most unlucky person in the world, uh, you probably don't have some crazy death in the family or something ha happening every week. Not that that can't happen, because it can, but, you know, um, if your your issues um, that arise um, are few and far between and you do your best to stay on top of stuff and communicate when there's a problem, teacher's probably lenient. If, you're, if you have an excuse every week, that may be possible, but not plausible that you're that unlucky, you know, and stuff keeps happening. Uh, but even then, talking to them, making that phone call, sending that email, doing whatever, like, it's better to communicate than not. And, Mr. Daffy Daff, Mr. Daff Daff, how you doing, man? How you doing? How you enjoying the new computer? How you enjoying the World of Warcraft? How you doing in general, my dude? How is life treating you? How is work? How's the little one? How's the, the lady, Mrs. Daff? How's your hobby endeavors? We ain't been getting as many daf daf updates. Yeah. I think pushing the shadows a little bit there was the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, you're not even trying to make a good excuse, you know? I don't think you told me that. That's not good, man. If you did, it may have unfortunately slipped my mind because my memory is not what it used to be. Um.
but I hope that uh, Mama Daff and the little one are okay. I'm sure you're gonna be just fine. Young, strong man like yourself, pumped up with the best antibiotics the government could pump into you in your young, youthful age as a Marine. Um, I, I jest a little bit because it, it is serious, but I try and you know, keep it lighthearted to, to not be stressful. Um, but yeah, I'm, I would be, if I'm wishing some happy, some happy vibes and good times and happy healing and all that stuff, uh, I think you're, you're likely fine. I'll send my good juju to the little one and the missus. Especially the little kiddo. It's, uh, not, um, not stuff to take lightly, even if I'm cracking jokes and trying to be slightly funny. It's less about that and more about just... I don't do well with serious situations as well. Yeah. Yeah. I got a friend of mine who was asymptomatic the whole time when he had it, um, and it was fine, but his uh, his wife got it, uh, and this was probably back in August, I think, and she's still got residual, like, lung problems. She's been having a really hard time breathing ever since. So, like, it impacts some people differently, because, like, he was fine, didn't even know he had it, um, quarantined when he found out, and... Um, you know, did what he needed to do to, um, you know, knock the thing out, I suppose. Um, but his, his wife did not fare as well. It's interesting how, um, um, different, I mean, and, and that's biology, I suppose, um, but how different people's immune systems handle it, um, is definitely interesting. A pretty bell bell. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. And that's the thing, like being responsible. You know, now that you know, making sure that you your damage control is a thing. You don't want someone else to get sick. You know, that is a hundred percent. Oh, that's okay, man. How you doing, Mr. Steiner? 
you guys aren't following Mr. Steiner Miniatures here on the Twitch, hit that follow button, show some hyper love, let them know who sent you. Oh, um, uh, so, uh, your message about that, um, I think it might even say it's, uh, compatible with, um, let me see, I know, I, I know I'm sidetracked here, but, like, that guy's drawing, so it's fine, um, okay, let's see here, <clears throat> Let's see here. Do we even have the term modular on here? Yeah, yeah, so uh, in the description, uh, donation goal for the month is 400 bucks. We are over half, a little over halfway there. If we hit it, um, those funds are gonna go into a pool towards picking up three new smaller cameras, a microphone, and a switcher deck so that I could do live stream games from um, my residence when I get into place. Um, yeah, so it, most people who buy our stuff, um, um, are already familiar. It is listed, but like over here, I suppose if you aren't looking at the photos, you also wouldn't know because we don't have like an instruction pamphlet that goes out with it. But like, you know, there's the base wall and you know, it's got the holes. And then when you look at the other photos, you see like, you know, the platform on there and then it's gone. Now you got those on there. Um, and then the top piece, you know, um, you see the building and then the next building, the pieces are different. Yeah. Um, um, and, and this is all modular. Anything that uses these hooks, these hook holes, it all works. So if you were like, um, if you were over here, you went into sci-fi and you're like, uh, let's see, what do we got here? If for whatever reason you were like, yo, I like this Odenheim stuff. I don't like the paint job because it looks too cyberpunk, but I want it to be 40K. And yo, this wide port augment looks like something crazy bananas. I don't know what that is. It, you could hook it to, to that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and our newer stuff, we've tried the best we can to make sure it's maximum offers maximum modularity. So there are some pieces that don't work with everything. So if you come into sci-fi and you go to new series, um, We've got, I think it's the narrow platform. That's the wide. So like the narrow platform, <clears throat> this, if I recall, only latches onto the sides of these buildings. Um, I think it's that, um, or something to that effect. We've got a few niche cases where there are augments that don't work across everything. The spacing's not right, but we've tried, once we notif or, uh, identified that as an issue, we've tried the best we can to make sure that there is maximum modularity possible. It's probably like 95 to 99% modular. Hey, pretty girl. Um, so um, being able to mix and match is really, really cool. And you'll see like over here, uh, Vesta Station, this is the pillbox, right? You know, so you could take that and that, this is probably also in Strider's Landing, but you can come over to Strider's Landing. And let's see, hey, pretty girl, what are you doing? And then you could take like this wall and that bunker will latch into those those hooks and you could double stack it. Um, let's copy it. So uh, that bunker from uh, Vesta Station, you could actually double stack the bunker. So you'd have one on the bottom, you take the top off, put the one on the top and you'd have a top on it. It would look like a double stack uh, bunker with windows. Um, and the uh, Vesta Station, Like this pillbox, right? It opens, the top comes off, and you can put infantry in. And it's got little viewports. And then that's one of my models. I painted those. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the double stack. You just you would take the top off right here. It would look like that. And then you take those. You would just wouldn't have those vents at the top. These you just wouldn't have those. And then you'd pop another bunker on top, and then you'd have a double stack of those hooks, and you'd hook on your buttresses, and the top, you can't get to the bottom floor that easy at that point, because they're stacked, but you can still get into the top. And if you look in this picture, um, this block has an extension on it, we've got buttresses, 
we've got that little um, that little bunker there. We've got two bunker pillboxes here, um, and then you could intermingle with other parts. So like. Um, if for whatever reason you're in here and you're looking and you're like, uh, let's go into Odenheim, and you're like, yo, this is really cool, but I don't like those buttresses, you could come over to here. I think it's at the end. Let's see. Where the buttresses? There's a street light closure. Was it seriously on the, the, the first page? Yeah, there's the single. Hmm. Hang on. What page is this on? There it is. Okay. So, if, uh, if for whatever reason you're just like, yo, I don't like these buttresses. I want to change the aesthetic and change the paint job. I'm going to use these. And you want to buy those buttresses, they work. They use the same uh, exact setup. So most of our stuff that uh, uses the hooks will work with that. Like it's all, it all intermingles. Um, same thing for like, uh, let's, let's go up um, street light. Yeah, so like there's street lights there. And let's say you were looking at striders. So, um, let's just bring up, oh yeah, there you go, there's a good example too. You can see the bunker in the bottom right here, and the platform above it. Those are my Dark Angels as well. Um, but let, let's say for whatever reason, you know, you see this little uh, reinforced wall augment and you're like, yo, that little OSL light is kind of cool, whatever. Uh, I want to change it up. You just pop that off, and then you can totally take this Odenheim street light, that whole apparatus, and then you can just plug it right there. You just hook it on, and then put a door under it because there's two hooks under there. So, yeah, um, our modular stuff is huge. It's not the most affordable MDF on the market, but it is maximum, like, cool factor, and that was kind of what we were pushing for. Um, we wanted to let you build, uh, what's, what's the term we use? Um, or the phrase, um, um, it's like have a different landscape every time or every battle or um, something like that, like it, it pushing mo maximum modularity. We have stuff that's not modular that's really affordable, like our Shattered Landscape stuff, um, but our Deadbolt's Derelict style, which is the hooking uh, columns and walls, the, the two hook thing, um, that is our bread and butter. There you go. So yeah, um, Keep in touch. I know we've talked about some Battletech stuff. I'm sure we can um, can make some things happen. And what's up, Mr. Java? Okay. Yep, it is huge, and it's very cheap. It's very cheap. The... Um, uh, the excavation site, which I think is $120, um, I could be a little bit off the map, but I think it's $120. Uh, that's a lot of buildings for that price. A lot of people don't know it exists, but we're hoping that this year it is going to be one of our top sellers because of how much table space it covers at the uh, cheap price point that uh, we're offering it. That's our goal. Because uh, um, Shattered Landscape Downtown Bundle is one of our best-selling kits, like, ever. That one and uh, Deadbolt's Derelict um, uh, Corridors Bundle, I think is what it's called. Um, those two. Hello, what is up? Hmm. Everything's okay, pretty girl. Here we go. And I'm working on um, I'm working on some BattleTech designs myself, um, which is new for me uh, and for DRD because um, um, I've never designed any terrain, and Austin does all the design work at the shop, and now he's got me trying to um, uh, do some stuff as well, which is pretty exciting and also uh, nerve-wracking, just a just a little bit. Um, 
So recently I've gotten uh, some designs done for some bunkers um, for uh, like a military base and yesterday I was working on some ruined walls which are very similar to the Strider's Landing stuff. Very similar. And Daff, if you're still there, um, hopefully I didn't segue away from the topic that you had brought up about COVID and what you're going through too quickly. Um, I don't want to be insensitive. Um, also don't want to dwell because I'm sure you've been focused on it long enough um, and you've still got that in the back of your mind, you know, always until everything's okay. Um, you know, but uh, I try not to dwell and then try and shift gears so that for a little bit maybe you can focus on something not so stressful while you're around. So I do apologize if I segued a little quickly, but um, I do uh, I do understand the, the stress that you're under. Yeah, um, uh, Daff was saying that um, it kind of had a cascading effect with a, a family member and then his kid and then him, he and his wife getting tested. And um, if I got the gist of it, I think he said his whole family got it. Um, but if not, it was definitely a cascading effect with everyone getting tested at the very least. And it's been um, kind of a pretty tense situation to be dealing with, and that's rough. Yeah, I've got some um, feelers out in the Battletech community about trading for some new inbox uh, mechs and books. Um, trying to get that, that collection jump started and we'll see if it goes anywhere. I almost snagged um, the 3145, two of the three that I was looking for, but someone else got to the trade before I could post. But I did try. Oh, I thought I sent you a list. Um, it was a whole bunch of uh, SKUs with names next to them uh, from stuff I'd looked at on Iron Wind. So I'll, uh, I'll dig that back up. I also can't remember that LAM mech's name. Um, you said you had some of them. Um, all I knew it was from was the picture, and it was super cool looking. So I was like, that one. I don't know what it is, but it looks cool. And that's, that's like half a battle tech. If I think a mech looks cool, I'm like, all right, I want to see it. I want to paint it. I want to build it. Well, 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 who do we have here? A Mr. Nomadic Christopher. If you guys aren't following Mr. Nomadic Chris, you know what to do. Click those links. Be the unicorn in his streams. Fly on in to that Instagram. 
hit that follow button show that happy love don't ask about the dark angel giveaway though because i want to win it and all seriousness no uh despite wanting to win it he does have a uh, a giveaway going on right now uh for i think maybe two more days um where you can enter to win a a dark angels librarian that he painted up but when you lose to me and i get the model don't cry foul I told you, the inner secrets, the inner secrets, the inner circle has its ways. And if I lose, it's, you cheated. That's just the way it is. If I win, it was all me. And if I lose the, this giveaway, you cheated. That's just, that's just the way it is. Admit nothing, deny everything, counter accuse. That's, uh, that's where it be and how it do. Let me get these um, black lines here, and I'll check out the link that Mr. Nomadic has bestowed upon us. On my librarian. I love it. I love it. I gotta be confident. I gotta try. It couldn't help or couldn't hurt the odds, right? Oh that's the base you were working on last night or this morning, wasn't it? That was the base. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Very cool. If I don't win, you could just send me that dwarf right there, though. Just saying. I'll take second place. Yeah, man, that uh, that sword's turning out really good. Hey, you even put a little signature on there. Look at that. Look at that. Very cool, man. I dig it. I love the subtle OSL effects you've got cast over as well. It's one of those, like, less is more, and you did not go overboard. And Steiner, we're excited, man. It is. It is. Um, protect, attack, take naps. Eh. Um, uh, Handley, did I miss something else? In, something in Georgia, I'm su assuming. Um, um... Let me, let, me, let me back up and collect myself. Uh, Steiner, we are super excited to see uh, your progress on that. Um, keep me posted. Uh, I sometimes miss messages, so I don't get um, posts up for streams as quickly as I, I'd like to. But um, if you have like an Instagram post, tag us. DRD will respond, and, you know, reshare, do things like that, and, and check out what you're doing. So we will definitely try to do our part to, to draw some attention for you. Um, and... Um, 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 let's see, um, all right, 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 into matting down the, the colors, um, I've struggled with that too, um, with matting colors, uh, sometimes I really like the matte look and the matte effect, um, but other times I feel like I lose something, I lose some transitions, I think that, um, I've taken a model, I've hit it with a gloss varnish and all of a sudden the colors just pop and I'm like, yo, that's sick. And then I put on decals and then I matte varnish over and I'm like, I'm losing a little something here. So I think that is uh, sometimes why you might see artists who um, might have like a, uh, a satin finish. So you get 
you know, kind of the in between. Um, but I, I'm strictly speculating on that as a guess. Uh, I know there's something to that. Uh, I don't know exactly what the 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 reason is. Some more artsy fartsy people here may understand that the the physics of it um, uh, better. Um, but there's something to do with uh, why colors look more saturated, if that's the word, when they're glossed versus when they're matte um, on the same model. Um, which is interesting because if I recall, I've tinkered with this where it's like I've had a gloss model, then matte varnished it, then glossed over it, and it, it just it, it flips back and forth. It's very interesting. Uh, what is Twitch doing, Mr. Glamwolf? And uh, speaking of our, our cool coffee mug here, I think that's a good segue into uh, me taking this last gulp here um, and uh, um, refilling, emptying the bladder, and resetting for the rest of the stream. So uh, when I get back, I'll be happy to continue chatting with uh, all of you. And no matter, Chris, it is it is awesome to catch you while we're here. Uh, before I take my quick break, though, I know, I know you may know where this is going. I know you may know. You may know, but you may not know, and you'll know what you know and what you don't know. Something you'll know. I got some things in the mail. I got one. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. When you're ready, I, I'm going to buy your extra one, and I'm going to buy these extra arms. Because let me tell you, this is cool, but the fact that the website did not have extra arms or any of these with the smaller arms, that's a little tall for me. And, you know... We know I got, uh, maybe, maybe big hands? I don't know. I got these man paws. You know what I got going on. That's a bit of a stretch. You know, and unless, unless I'm painting a fucking Barbie doll, clearly it's not as tall as a Barbie doll, but you know what I'm saying. Like, you said you had extra, uh, bars. I'm gonna buy them from you, but I'm gonna annoy you till you sell them to me. It's gonna happen. I need them. <laughs> um, but it is super neat, um... These are, uh, it's unfortunate they're so expensive and not as easily accessible here in the United States. I think if I showed this design to Austin, he could probably turn these at his dad's shop, his woodwork shop. He could probably make this. The bar would be difficult, but he could make these for sure. Um, I may actually talk to him and see, uh, if you've got extra bars, I may show him this, um, and then I might be able to get him to turn me a couple and I can, um, use all the bars. I just have to deal with some being taller than, and some being shorter. Um, I hope I'm not talking to myself. Because Clan Wolf mentioned the stream was being funky, so I hope I'm not talking to myself. It's possible. Um, so, uh, anyway, um, got this. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Java. Um, and then, I know you weren't as big of a fan, but um, I picked this up, too. Um, I've wanted it for a while. It's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's got the, I think, one size lower. It's got a much more secure lock on it. Like, that's pretty secure. If you pull that up, it gets really loose. Uh, pull it down, which, like, I like that a little bit better than the other one. Um, but this is uh, less about super functionality, more about on screen. Uh, it looks very visually appealing and nice in your hand, and I want to paint some busts on this. I think that'll be a really nice, you know, uh, professional look, painting a bust with this nice uh, canvas to be working with, uh, or tool to be working with. Um, um, so, yeah, I'm pretty pretty stoked about that. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Um, um, oh, I got, uh, I got these. So I could put my 32 mil bases in, or if I want to work on something, I could glue it to a 32 mil base and, you know, just clamp it in there and be good to go. Um, but yeah, it's something new. Um, it's not going to be, you know, the, the replacement for all my stuff, but uh, oh, I remember what I was going to say. I was going to say, uh, I like the way it looks. The way it feels is nice. Um, but I think that your camera and your lens has like a, a much more crisp view than what mine shows. Um, your colors are super vibrant. And like, I feel like your little, your little Chris hands and something like that. Now, I mean, you got those small ones too. But like, with the way that your, your stream looks, like, there's more to it than just the art. It's the whole, like, your whole hand area, which you spend a lot of time looking at. So the nice stuff looks good. I think it was your, um... Um, your dwarf you were working on, and you, you had like I think a block, a circle wooden block, um, and that the same thing. It's a different look. It's different than a normal plastic paint handle. It's just got a, an interesting look to it. So just having stuff like that, with some interesting wood grain around and some sticky tack or poster tack uh, on it is um, it's a it's a nice change. So, uh, but anyways, 
uh, guys, I'm going to take a quick break. We're going to refill that coffee mug, and when we get back, we're going to get uh, uh, dive into continuing to black line these panels and hopefully have the gold done. And then if we've got time left, I'll try and start blocking in some silvers. But these guys are coming together quickly. We're on the downhill slide, and the lance is almost complete. Um, I do think I want to come in. I know Clan Wolf's going to give me some shit. I think I've got some decals. Uh, is it this one? No. I think I've got some decals. So oh, it is. All right, so I've got some checker pattern decals. Um, I might follow what I did on my previous Thunderbolt. So I put a little bit down here on this leg just to break up that black area. Um, uh, I'm not sure if there's a, a good... Maybe I'll put some, ooh, actually, around his missile or laser here. Like a little checker pattern around the, the cannon. Or his, his left arm might be cool. A small, subtle way to break up the black. I don't think he needs any more. I think he looks fine. He's got plenty. But I think uh, adding a little decal uh, here or there on these guys would not be bad. Um, and yeah, I'll get to use some of these. Um, or hell, even maybe using that one. That's pretty nice. That's an interesting little thing. So yeah. Uh, trying to, um, hell, even using some of these little text scripture things, they're so small you can't read them, uh, putting that on like a, uh, the side of a cannon or something uh, might make it look like it's warning text or something. Could be could be some cool effects to bring to bear um, with some uh, some GW decals there. So, But on that note, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and I'll be back with coffee and more painting in just a few minutes.
we are back. I apologize for the delay, folks. Got my coffees, and uh, we're gonna take a quick segue here. We have a York peppermint patty. Clan Wolf, this is an honor of you, my dude. Except it's not a Dr. Pepper. took too big of a bite and now my teeth hurt they don't have like rotting teeth but like you know sometimes you eat something cold or sugary my teeth got hurt I like, also can't drink like really really cold drinks real quick or at least not like swish it'll hurt my mouth my teeth are sensitive whoop, whoop. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. speaking of striders landing Steiner. Working on some Battletech terrain. And um, these are the, <clears throat> the walls I've designed. These aren't done yet, but this is where I was yesterday. I'm thinking about shortening these a little bit. Right now they're uh, about four inches. I'm thinking about cutting off uh, a little over an inch, maybe. Um. And uh, that way they can fit a little closer. Um, but they, they have a hex, and this will go straight down the center of a hex line. So you can set them up on your table if you're using a hex grid. If not, just put them out you want. Um, and then they line up pretty well with mechs. You know, so they'll, the hexes are a little bit bigger. They're designed for the uh, 1.2 whatever thing, but like these will fit oops, inside, so it's good. Um, and then I've got, uh, we'll have some resin turret drop-ins to go on top of that when Austin designs those for me. Because uh, I don't do 3D design. And then we got our gate. i got to figure out something to do for the top and right in here. But we got our little gate. It'll have two turrets as well. And, you know, little guys. Pew, 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 pew. Um, and then we've got our one of our bunkers. I think that'll look pretty good alongside our little fortress. Like a cool little, um, you know, sci-fi base thing. Um, so, yeah. I've been trying to... Keep at it with that stuff and um, push forward for future release one day. One day! See what we can uh, can come up with. Okay. Now, before I uh, took my break, we were working on black lining. So we'll get back to doing some of that. Stuff falling off on me. Do, 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 do. Alright, so let's get back to it. Alright. Nothing too fancy going on here, just trying to trace that stuff. Yep. 
This little extra step may not be necessary, but I, I think it, it helps separate the panels pretty nicely. You know, Nomadic, I, I think I might have forgot to ask. I don't want to dive too deep into your, uh, um, um, your personal life, but how was your Christmas? Yeah, um, I'll, uh, I'll tell Austin you said that. I had nothing to do with the design of that stuff. That saw him. I wish I could take some credit, but... That's all him. Now we're working on some infinity terrain now that'll fit the um, affordable terrain niche because we have plenty of stuff that looks good for infinity that's premium expensive style terrain. So stuff that'll be affordable and cheap and still look good within those confines. And we're working on design that is kind of like a Russian doll where the terrain can all fit inside of itself. So for storage and cleanup, it's really easy to um, uh, pack up and put on a shelf somewhere. It takes up minimal space. So that's what we're working on. Well, I hope that you have some fun, uh, and even more so, hopefully, uh, one day you'll get to play some games on it, and uh, hopefully enjoy that aspect too. There are a couple of guys that we work with who um, organize events. Uh, one of them is the Narrative Guys, I think is the name of their channel. And then we work with uh, a couple guys that go to conventions and set up narrative games. And they do a lot of cool custom conversion work with our terrain, uh, making these giant tables. And it's, it's really sick.
think this one up here is probably the most crucial or critical to not look stupid. Okay. And now let's uh, come in here and try and follow the panel lines there. Slipped a little bit. It was not the crispest thing I've ever done. It was a little sloppy, but we'll have to deal with it as we do. Probably should have whipped out my uh, a smaller brush for that, just for a little bit more precision, but I didn't, and that is my fault. Come over to the Irby. Your turn, bud. You shouldn't be too bad. What's up uh, for Norse guy? Oh, the disguise at Easter egg. Got it. I was like, what Easter egg? Well, thank you. I appreciate that, man. Um, it wasn't perfect on all these, but like, I think it, I think it worked out. It's, it's, you know me. 
I think we're in the same boat. You could whip out the most dopest ass fucking um, dwarven non-metallic metal axe in gold and orange hair, and and I'll be like, yo, that's super dope, and you'll be like, it's trash. It's trash. I don't like it. I'm gonna throw it in the garbage, and then I'll do the same thing, and I'll be like, eh. I'm, all, I'm pretty happy with the blue. The black looks lazy, and the, the gold's okay. I should have pushed the contrast better, and the highlights aren't good enough. And you'll be like, oh, it looks good. I'm like, thank you. I appreciate it. But also, I sit here and look at it. I'm like, I should have went darker. I should have had better contrast because the highlights, they blend in a little too much. I mean, on the screen, it looks fine. In person, it feels like it's just, it's it's muted. The transition from um, this gold to the bright gold at the top is just not as crisp as I wanted. Um... I'm leaving it as it is because it's fine, but like it's it's not. It's, it, it wasn't my goal. It's not. This is. It didn't. It didn't. This didn't come out exactly the way I wanted. Um, but I'm trying not to worry about it and remind myself that on the next model, just try and do better. This looks good. Like you said, it, the highlights look good against that gold. It's fine. Don't stress. But I still stress because it's like, how would I do better? What did I do wrong? How can I achieve the effects I want? Um, you know. So next time, I'm gonna try to do a little bit better. Which I think is the difference. Like you said, you know, um, doing something, get it, getting it done, and being open-minded to growth and, and trying to you know, do better the, the next time is about all we can do. We've, we've used this quote before. Try to be a better painter today than we were yesterday and a better painter tomorrow than you are today. Um, so try not to stress to get it done. It'll look pretty good. And then just try and learn from it and do a little bit better next time I work on some true metallics. And then the next time a little bit better. The next time. I do think that the blue... It's not perfectly the way I wanted, but I'm actually, compared to the gold, I'm not too displeased with the blue. It's not perfect as I would want in all the areas, but for someone who doesn't do a lot of blending this way, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, could it have been better? Sure. Uh, but I think, I think for my experience level with this style of blending, I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased with the results. But yeah. That said, your little dwarfy dwarf is looking dope. I know you uh, aren't quite as thrilled, or at least last time I saw you working on them, you weren't as thrilled because the non metal wasn't where you wanted, and you you know you weren't sure on some of your highlights and, and your process. And one side you thought looked good, and the other side not as good. And I know, but I'm liking. It. And while you're you're working on you know perfecting your your non-metallic metal game, you didn't have to work too hard on the hair because that turned out pretty good so far. I'm not sure what else you got going on, but at least at, if you're worried about the model, you're focused on areas that you can grow and improve on. But you definitely got that hair on lock. The skin tone is looking really good too. This is why I tell people to get on that Instagram life, because I don't get to catch nomadic streams very often, and he sometimes gets it to make it to mine and, and posts um, whips, but I get to see his updates on Instagram every couple days when he throws a picture up, and that is where I usually keep up with him, unless he DMs me something, which sometimes he'll he'll achieve an effect that he, is, he can't wait for Instagram posts. He'll be like, yo, look at this, and I'm like, yeah, let me see what you got. Show me what you got. How not to get black on your gold. Because that's what I just did. I feel like the top of his little trash can here. Probably need to pull that black line all the way around. And 
that'll look a little better. And then we could probably put one right here too. If I had enough paint on my brush. Yeah, I think that that's that's much better. It's very subtle, but it really pushes the this panel up and the recess down. And black lining can take forever. So I'm not trying to hit everything. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I did not. I've not hit every panel. I've hit some things that are near the goal, but like I didn't come in here and do every panel on this leg, even though right here could probably benefit from it. What's up, Java? Having some um, some more dum dums at work. goes into your job do you, do you have to go to school for this well not your job but the, the people that work under you what's the training like what's the requirements for this position or positions I know it's remote Not sure how I feel about those, but they're on there now. You just got up by a client for not calling it back. And then I had to confirm with him his phone number he used for our contract. He canceled the line. Oh, well. Oh. Uh, well, I can't help you. I can't help you. I can be the guy who answers emails and tells you you got an email and tell you to respond to that email. That's all I could do. Can't help you. I'm sorry. Hey, what's up, Embassy? How are you doing? How are you doing today? How is life treating you? Oh, there you go. Frost and I, uh, I'm occasionally basically a, a glorified secretary. I do a lot of things there, but sometimes it's like, hey, we got this email, we got this phone call, we got this thing we got to do. Hey, nice. What, uh, what compressor did you go with, Embassy?
Oh, very cool. Very cool. I'm hoping that ratio is good. Yeah, I've got um, a uh, no-name brand, Mr. 2D or something like that, and then I've got a uh, Sparmax TC2000. I think it's going to need a smidge more water. No agitator in there. Gets stuck in the nozzle. What is a super glue looper? Yo, you, you might have saw, but um, I made a post yesterday. Uh, a friend of mine stopped by and gave me a, a, a late Christmas present. Got me a box of Phase 2 Clone Troopers. As you've been on that Legion kick, I thought you might appreciate that. I'm pretty excited. I've been building away on um, Legion when I get some time and painting away on Battletech. Pretty cool, man. I am excited. I gotta get gas on the way to work today. Damn it. Just remembered. Fuel tank is low. Damn it. I hate having to stop. It needs to be like, uh, <laughs> always sunny. We need door to door gas salesmen. Um, most people I know that got into Legion bought two copies of the starter boxes. Um, so they'd double up on the troops and the extra stuff, or they would each buy one and they'd split, so they'd double up. Um, I'm shocked you didn't.
Do you have a, a group of guys in your area to play Legion with? Oh, that's fair, that's fair. But at least you're enjoying it, uh, or you're excited about it regardless. Um, I think a lot of people end up kind of getting um, forced into a miniatures game to play. Um, simply out of necessity in their area, like if you want to play uh, War Machine but no one's playing War Machine, but everyone plays 40k. If you want to play minis, you kind of got to play what other people play or try and start your own group, which not everyone has the time uh, or the desire to do. Uh, and the same thing with, even within 40k or Games Workshop's brand. There are a lot of places where 40k is not popular, but Age of Sigmar is. But if you were the 40k guy, it's like, well, I mean, you may have to settle for playing Age of Sigmar if you want to roll dice because you might not be able to find 40k as easily. You know, so it's really nice to see that you're, you're doing some Legion, even if it might not be as popular as 40k uh, or at least as uh, ubiquitous I think might be the, the word um, but I think it's got a, a really solid rule set and it's a lot of fun there's a reason that I've been investing in a legion when I can get models and battletech and not 40k and it has nothing to do with the quality of the minis it has everything to do with uh, having fun with what's going on and uh, there's a variety of things going on with GW that I'm not happy about, but um, straight up rules-wise, Legion and Battletech I've had a lot of fun with. 40k has always been, uh, for the longest time now, just a struggle. It's not just learning rules, it just feels like list building means more than playing the game. And I feel like, um, and maybe I've not played with hyper-competitive people in Battletech yet, which probably wouldn't enjoy, but I feel like 40k is shifting and pushing more for the tournament side and less on the narrative side and the fluffy side. And we're getting more of that. Even um, the emails I get from them, I get um, um, emails about uh, the meta, and it's got the Nadavadi guy, who's the big tournament dude. And it's like cool, but I can't roll my eyes out of the back of my head far enough when I get an email from GW about a meta report for 40k. It's like I don't care. Like I I like your game uh, for the narrative and the fluff. I don't care what's going on in tournaments. And now my your me being on your uh, email list here that's the emails I'm getting it's like I don't care it's cool that you're trying to do it I guess but like you've 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 done a 180 from um, narrative style support or the way the game was to uh, now it's you're doing a lot to cater to the tournament crowd it's like all right that's cool but that's not for me if it is for someone else that's fine do what makes you happy but it's not for me um, that's not what pulled me into 40k and I've played in tournaments for basically every other game I've ever played or ran. 40k is one I have no interest in doing that for. It also had the best opportunity to forge a cool narrative of your own, which I liked. That's a good start, though. You gotta get your paint and some battle tick, though. One day, I'm going to try.
Yeah, the um, uh, at least with BattleTech in particular, the um, the investment for playing is really cheap. Like, if you want to play with your kiddo, um, you could literally just buy the Game of Armor Combat Box, spend you know between forty five and sixty bucks, and call it good. You have eight mechs and enough stuff to just do some basic um, board game style setups. You don't have to invest eh, a lot of money uh, right now. Fortress Games and Miniatures has the um, clan box on sale for thirty-two fifty if they're still in stock, and he's got the Game of Armor Combat one for forty-five. So, not uh, not bad pickups. Um, finance if finances are tight, I hope, totally get it. But if you're interested, I could drop you a link and show them to you. And if you want to pick them up, cool. If not, no big deal. Um, but it is a really good way to get into uh, BattleTech. I highly recommend. Um, Basically, if you were going to spend right at 100 bucks, you could get the Game of Armor Combat box from him, the Clan Invasion box, that would put you at 7750 and then you could get his um, beginner box, which has two mechs in it. It's the only way to get the Plastic Griffin right now, and that's like 15 so it would put you at 80 92 9250, I think, something like that. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I'll grab, I'll grab you a link. And uh, it's a, a smaller, it's a small business that just opened up in North Carolina, so. Uh, if you order anything from them, uh, if there's an option to leave a note, let them know I sent you. I've been trying to help promote them. Um, this is a really nice guy. So this is his website. Catalyst box sets. Alright, yep. I'm not sure why the link says source books out of print, but this is the link to it. Um, this is the game of combat he's got it on sale for 45 and it's got a um, awesome battle master commando shadowhawk locust wolverine thunderbolt and catapult eight mechs a couple of maps um, i think it's two but it might be one that's flip uh, reversible pilot cards alpha strike cards uh, standees for cardboard standees if you want to have more mechs and you don't have plastic ones you got those Some dice basic rules little primer and some uh, mech sheets if you want to play classic because there's classic and alpha strike i highly recommend alpha strike but cla there's classic if you're going to spend a little bit more um but don't want to go quite to this the beginner box is really good too um just for the extra cards the extra mechs extra stuff um and it's got the wolverine and the griffin it's the only way you can get the griffin right now in plastic unless you can buy a single um so he's got that um, that's a good expansion. If you got that with the other one, that's at 60 bucks, and that puts you at 10 mechs, which is a really good um, starting point. And then if you want to um, go to the 9250 uh, point uh, and bring in the clans, he doesn't have a picture of it, but um, there we go. So this is the clan invasion box. Um, it does not have the um, elementals listed, but it does come with elementals. Um, so you get alpha strike cards, pilot cards, five mechs, two elementals, some pilot card or um, some of uh, the uh, um, uh, printout sheets and whatnot, mech sheets. Um, and then you'll get two of these little elementals like this in there. They don't have a card for those in there, which is stupid. They don't, but um, yeah. The other thing that is, he's got going for him too is if you go into Catalyst, not Catalyst, Battletech, and if you go into Previously Owned, and you go to Miniatures and Blisters, he's got quite a few pewter mechs that are dirt cheap. Um, some are good sculpts, some are not, but like they're in the $8 range for a lot of these, which is really nice. And then you've got, let's go to Catalyst, um, Miniatures Loose. If there's a specific mini from the game that you really like, um, that you're familiar with, uh, he's got some of these up. Um, some may go out of stock, some may not. 
Um, you know, but you're looking at the um, uh, usually around eight to ten buck range on most of these singles. So, if there's something you want, that's cool. You've got two pages of them. Now, granted, um, um, yo, know, nine bucks for Aiden Pride's really good. Um, I can't believe she is only ten dollars. Interesting. Yep. Uh, but yeah, there, there's plenty of stuff here that's really cheap. I've had to resist the urge to buy more because I don't need more of these. Um, in particular, I've been interested in picking up some elementals. Um, I still might, still might pick up a couple. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, got a uh, got a stuff on the site here. If there's anything that uh, from the singles from the Kickstarter that you're interested in. There you go. Got your link. And like I said, if you do happen to um, uh, order anything, um, let them know. I sent you. That will uh, look real good for me. I don't get anything out of it, but honestly, like um, he'd probably uh, be pretty stoked to see that I was uh, spreading a good word for him. Blocking in silvers. Don't got a lot of time before the end of the stream here, so just getting finished what we can get finished. Not even sure what this little part back here is, but it seemed like it'd be cool to break up his back. Have a little bit of silver going on. Probably pretty good there. Nice. Is she here? Oh, thank you. That's awesome, man. Snoopy, was that you the other day that was uh, asking for something in Zulu time? Or something? That's fair. Nice, dude. That's that's legit. You are you are good to go. You are good to go. Mm 
<laughs> I'm so excited to tell that guy that. I was like, you got an order from me <laughs> or from my stream. Uh, it's awesome. I really hope you enjoy it, man. I really do. It's um, it's been it's been a nice ride thus far. Um, I'm really excited to see where it goes. I feel like BattleTech is in a um, a current uh, renaissance of sorts. I'm really hoping that the wave keeps on going. Don't uh, don't stop. Keep it keep it going. You know. Um, new mechs, new books, new designs, new stuff. Keep it coming. And the more we support them, the better. I'm um, also really glad that you were able to get in now, not having to wait. Uh, I was worried that he'd sell out of those clan boxes because the price points are so cheap um, and they're hard to find right now. The Game of Armor Combat's hit or miss, um, but you can find it. The uh, clan one is um, not as easy to source, especially not at that price point. David Jones, thank you for the like over on the Facebook. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, so the guy that runs the site sent me a message, and he said, thank you, and he said to let you know to, if you ever have questions, never to hesitate. You can always send him a message, and he'll talk to you. He, he knows a lot about Battletech, so if you have questions about where to expand uh, on what you have, maybe what books to read or look into to find out about the, the lore and the fluff, uh, he owns, he's probably got the biggest collection of Battletech stuff in the United States, I venture to say. They, they joke about him on Facebook and say he's got a museum, because... Um, since uh, Battletech came out in the, I guess, I think early 80s, somewhere in there, um, outside of the clicks, he has uh, at least, I think he said two of everything they've ever produced, something like that, and most of the video games, if not all of them, and some hard copy that he's kept, like, he, he's got, he is a Battletech guy. So if you actually do get to a point where you want to learn about the, the lore and the fluff, or want to know kind of the next step um, to take after the uh, those box sets once you get to painting them and playing... You know, reach out to him on the Facebook, send him a message, and he'll be happy to, to ramble to you. He encouraged, um, I don't know, he encouraged, he directed me to some books to pick up to learn about the fluff, too. So I picked up um, three books about the Great Death Legion that apparently helped set, like, get you set up learning about Battletech. So I was pretty excited.
came to hang out in the stream and watch painting, Justin, not listen to your type. Okay. Hoping to get the silver on this guy at least based so that I can drop a wash and kind of see how I'm feeling about it. And that'll set me up for my paint session on Friday. I think I'll be trying to get in some extra work on these mechs. Then after they're done, I'm thinking about trying to maybe make some time after them to finish up our Catechin Colonel that never got finished from our Sunday streams that we used to do. And then um, after that, maybe work on a bust. And then after that, maybe work on some more Battletech or on some Legion. I don't know. We'll see. might hit this little radar dish up here that might stand out pretty nicely I think Okay. Let's grab the air dry real fast. Okay, 
make sure that that uh, uh, <clears throat> metallic was dry. Thin down enough. I did a two to one wash to stuff, so I'm hoping that thins it down a little bit. I don't want it to be too um, anemic. Yeah, I think we're probably okay. Snoofy, how how old's your kiddo? Oh, youngin'. Couple more years, gonna have uh, chores. Ain't gotta worry about uh, mowing the lawn, just gotta paint Dad's army. Well, son, this week, if you don't get your tin uh, Space Marines done for me, no allowance. But, Dad, I mowed the lawn. Nope. Mowing the lawn doesn't count. Your painting chores come first, son. Daddy ain't gonna paint the... Or, not Daddy. <laughs> uh, these Space Marines aren't gonna paint themselves. Let's go, snap, snap. That's yeah, funny. I joke with Daft, too. His little kid's very young, and uh, uh, I'll say some dumb shit like, Man, about time for that kid to get a job. <laughs> ain't even out of diapers. Uh, I mean, the, the thing that would be cool is if um, if your kid um, uh, gets interested in minis and over time, um, you know, the, the chores could lead to hobby, um, you know, gifts. You know, like, oh, you've been doing so good. Need that uh, that box of clone troopers or stormtroopers or rebels or space marines, whatever. You know, you did good this month or you got good grades. We'll get you that box of guys. You know, you can paint them up and expand and then we'll play some games together. Like, that's such a cool thing to be able to incentivize um, doing things and also promote um, you know, hobby and art growth. That's fucking dope. It's super cool. It's probably one of the things that um, I missed out on with my dad is um, if that had been something. I, I don't think it would have been because um, he's not particularly artsy. Um, but I did enjoy playing board games as a kid, so he introduced me to Stratego and Risk when I was a child. Um, and I, I think that 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 relationship with a parent who might have some interest in tabletops would be really cool. And then, like my buddy John, you know, his dad was big into D and D. And his dad used to run campaigns and stuff for him when he was a kid, and he used to play. And I'm like, that's so cool, man. And, you know, 
my buddy John was in the Marines and his dad was in the Navy, so um, I just imagine like a guy um, on a boat playing D and D, you know, between shifts and stuff with his other shipmates. Like that seems like so, it's like such a cool thing to do to pass the time if you're in a shitty situation, you know. That's awesome, man. And the thing that's really cool about Battletech is like they're stompy robots and painting them can be very forgiving. So like they have detail, but it's not like painting faces and stuff like that. So like it's a good place to, you know, practice and learn and start. And at eight years old, being a very young individual getting into hobbies, like might not be a bad place. Though I suppose the um, um, Star Wars Legion stuff's not too bad to play around with, at least like the armored trooper guys, because it's you know almost like coloring, coloring book, but with um, you know a 3D mini. It's like clone troopers, droids, um, uh, stormtroopers. They're all like kind of solid colors for the most part, whereas like the the rebels kind of have the organic cloth and a, a bit more complexity to them. George Thompson, thank you for the like over on Facebook. I appreciate that. Oh, I didn't realize what time it was. I gotta get ready to go. Let's get this wash this this wash down, and we gotta get ready to sign off. I didn't realize how late it had gotten, how quick, how quickly it got to the time that it did. Yeah. Oh, and his little his little satellite dish. Let's get that too. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's looking pretty cool. Very slick. Um, I think once we get the the metallic down on the other guys, I'll come in and we'll do some highlights and stuff to like make some pop right nice. And then we'll try and get in here and do. Um, I was gonna say try and do some kind of cockpit effect. I'm just not sure if we'll be able to get in there easy. We'll see what we can do. Um, we'll get the lasers done. Uh, probably blue on those and probably green on those. Um, or maybe blue on all of them and then like green on his cockpit um, if we can get in there to it uh, and then we'll we'll enhance the the silver wool um, edge highlight up so we get this nice um, um, the, like the panels will be popping because we got the dark recess and then the highlight right next to it so it'll bring the the highlight or the the, the edge up and the recess down um, so I think that'll look good and when we kind of extrapolate and look at this guy we'll have something very similar very similar going on I think it'll look Pretty cool, pretty cool.
Just got to get there. Got to block in the silvers. We're also probably going to drop. Actually, I might do it while I got the, the wash mixed real quick before we go. Um, this guy. This needed. Yeah, there we go. Um, it was a little too light uh, from yesterday's session, and I forgot to wash it one more time. So this will this will darken that up pretty nicely. And this I'm using Opulentus Black from Green Stuff World. Um, their inks are quite phenomenal. Really good for washing and tinting stuff. Um, if you want to preserve some of your your colors and your highlights and dry brushing and all that, like these are really nice to. Um, basically kind of glaze or tint. You come in here and shift a tint on something without completely losing um, your previous work. That's really cool. So, but on that, on that note, guys, it is a few minutes past the time when I normally start to sign off, so let's go ahead and see if we can um, line up a raid target real quick, and then we'll get, whoops, get ready to sign off for the day. Who we got online today? I mean, <laughs> I do type quick. My accuracy is in question. All right, so today uh, we are going to throw a raid on over to Aaron J. Bang. He, he says he'll be online for a little bit. Um, yesterday I tried to raid him, and then he ended up going offline, and then he ended up raiding me as I was raiding someone else, and I'm going to try and return the favor today. Uh, so if you guys happen to go over in that raid today, please hit that follow button, spam some emotes, let him know who sent you. Show some hobby love. He's a super chill guy underrated artist on the the platform and if you just want some good positive vibes Aaron J Banks good people you can't go, can't go wrong hang out there but as always as we sign off let's end on some positive notes as we always do all right guys we're to that that time of the day that time of the stream where it's time to get offline so I'm going to end on some positive notes and leave you feeling a little bit better than you did before you popped into the stream if I can first and foremost I know I know that, that life can be a struggle. I know that sometimes our hobbies are supposed to be our release, but those struggles bleed in. Sometimes our pursuits of perfection, our desire to finish a project causes us to lose sight of what's important. Sometimes we get so focused on the end result that we forget to enjoy the journey that gets us there. And then when we finally reach that target, we set a new target and forget to enjoy that journey. And that pushes us ever closer to hobby burnout. It is a real thing. So I highly encourage you guys to try as, as best you can to not allow fear, anxiety, worries, depression, anything like that to dictate what you do both in this life and in the hobby. If you feel as though you're approaching that hobby burnout, take a step back and reflect. Figure out what you've got to do to find your hobby center. Maybe that means taking a break from painting for just a little while. Maybe that means working on a different piece. Maybe it means changing your scope from finishing a full army to a unit to a single model. Maybe that means stepping away from the assembly line paint jobs and uh, working on some bolt guns here, some shoulder pads here, some lenses here, and changing up the details you're working on. That may not be uh, the most efficient way to approach your armies, but it can help break up the monotony of working on mass amounts of minis. Remember that the point of this is to enjoy the hobby, to enjoy the painting, to allow yourself, your personality, your emotions, your lore, your fluff, your feelings, the world, the narrative you create to bleed into your miniatures. If the end result is only to get minis on the tabletop, you're missing out. You're, you, you're appro you will approach eventually that hobby burnout. Remember that from the starting point of the miniatures you pick up when you start building them, to priming, to painting, everything along the way, you are crafting and forging a narrative, a story of your choosing. Remember that it's not all about the dice rolls that happen at the end. It's that process. It's the journey. It's being able to share with your opponents, your friends, the people that you engage with, the narrative that you've created, your miniatures, your art, your form of self-expression through that paintbrush. This is your way to connect with people. 
And in a world, in a reality, in a society right now where things seem so far beyond and outside of our control, this is somewhere where you can have just a little bit of control. This is your world, as Bob Ross would say. You are the creator. With one brushstroke at a time, you can forge a narrative, a universe, a story of your choosing. Every miniature that you pick up has a story, accolades, battles they've taken part in, a name, a universe they hail from. What are they to you? Every nicking, scratching, and perfection is something that you have control over. Forge those narratives, paint those minis, and share that with the world. When it's safe to do so, both in person, playing games, and allowing your models to clash and create a narrative and a story of their own against someone else's army, but also in the, the digital realm. There's enough negative bullshit on our social media feeds every day. They grind us down. Sometimes we may feel like mountains, we may feel like rocks, but you know what? What takes those, what weather those away? The fucking onslaught of water. That that will wither you away. It doesn't matter how strong you are. If you get hit by something long enough, for enough duration, it will weather you away. It will, it will start to round and soften your edges. And that often happens, I feel, with social media. The, the things that we're bombarded with every day, no matter how strong we feel, we might be. In the back of our minds, eventually, those dams, they may, they may collapse. And you may start to feel, even just a little bit, it may come on slow... You may start to feel anxiety, worries, depression, fears, you know, some type of um, uneasiness about what's going on. You may not even realize the impact it's having on you. That's what happens when negativity is bombarded on us all the time. There is somebody that's sitting there on their phone right now, I promise you. They may be even taking a shit. They're sitting there. They're feeling bad. And they're swiping through their phone. They're, they're, they're scrolling through. And they're having a bad day. Your post, your picture may be the thing that they see that gets them motivated. It may make them happy. That may spark an interest in the hobby. You could be that catalyst for change. You could be the person, the thing, the post, the picture. Your art, your hobby, your crafts, your narrative, your minis could be something that gets somebody motivated to paint again. That same person may be someone who has never painted before in their life. They, it's some fluke chance that your picture, your miniature came across their feed, but they saw it and now they're interested. And they take that first step into a hobby, a world a realm of reality that we all share and love. You can be that change. What's not going to happen, though, is we're not going to have positivity and happiness overnight if we don't do our jobs, if we don't take that opportunity to spread a little bit of hobby joy, one little post, one little picture, one little brushstroke at a time. Whether you are a new artist, an award-winning artist, or anywhere in between, be proud of your work. Get out there in the digital realm. Post your pictures. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Discord, anywhere you can think of. Post that those pictures spread your hobby joy cast that light into the darkness and allow just a little bit your art your self-expression to bleed through and bring a little bit of happiness to someone else and as we end our streams as we always do i'd like to encourage you guys to leave the world a better place than you found it in every sense of that statement you never know what people are going through in their everyday lives and it pays to be kind always those that you engage with maybe having a bad day a bad week a bad month a bad year a bad go at life in general but i promise you you are equipped you are armed with the tools should you bring them to bear to have a positive impact on others simply by smiling making eye contact saying please saying thank you holding a door open for someone making someone feel like that valued human being taking that extra step to compliment someone that can be that difference between a good day and a bad day for them even if you're not there to see that happiness grow you can plant that seed of happiness. You can ignite that fire that could grow into an inferno of happiness, that warm feeling of inclusivity, simply by being an awesome human being to others. I highly encourage you guys to sell through this life, leaving positivity and happiness in your wake. There's enough negativity and bullshit in the world. Let's be a part of the solution and not the problem. And as we end today's stream, I'm going to take a step back from the pulpit, kick that soapbox out from under me, and we're going to go ahead and get this raid going off to uh, Mr. Aaron J. Bang. If you guys happen to go there again, please show some hobby love. Hit that follow button, spam some emotes, and let them know who sent you. As always, I've had a blast hanging out with you guys today. Thank you so much for giving me a platform to express myself, to enjoy these hobbies, these narratives, the, the lore, the painting, the minis that I love with you. Hopefully I've encouraged you guys, motivated you to try something new, to pick up those paintbrushes and work on your miniatures. But it is that time. It is time to go. As always, keep rolling those dice, keep painting those models, and I will catch you guys on Friday.